Hello, welcome to the Hendrix Gin Palace. Please, come on in. Fast Company visited the Hendrix Gin Innovation Lab, otherwise known as the Gin Palace, to find out what sets them apart from their competitors. I think the philosophy is that we're going to do the same as we've done right from the start of Hendrix. We're going to zig when others zag. Innovation is a big thing for Hendrix, and particularly with it being a gin, because you've got so many different flavour directions you can go in, you can basically go in any flavour direction you want. Well, here we are in Stillhouse One of our beautiful gin palace. And in here we have three beautiful stills, but these two are very special. These were the two that Charlie Gordon bought back in 1966 from an auction in London. The Bennett still here, as you can see, was built in 1860. And for this one, all of the dry botanicals go into the body of the still. But he also wanted the Carter head still used, which as you can see is a totally different still altogether. For this one, all the botanicals go in the flavour basket, which is up on the floor up there. So it's a totally different distillation technique. These stills produce exactly the same distillate every day because all of our variants are Hendrix at the core. So we're very lucky that we have two beautiful greenhouses here and one of them is set to the tropical environment. So we have different types of flowers, all sorts of things that I can take the leaves and the fruit upstairs and experiment with them. We have a Mediterranean greenhouse. Now that's set to the Mediterranean climate, so in there we have lots of different citrus plants. So we've got oranges, limes, lemons, pomelos, but my favourite part of the whole building is in there, in the back corner. I can sit on the windowsill, get my book, get my drink, such magic. Here we are in my beautiful lab. This is where I get to come and play every day. So this is where I come and do different extractions, distillates of lots of different things and just see what the flavour profiles are like and how we can potentially use them. I'm not the tidiest person, but in here we have lots of different potential ingredients. Behind me, I've got the flavour library that's got lots of different botanicals, extracts, distillates, essential oils. Every day is different and if I'm thinking about using a particular ingredient, then I'll take that ingredient, go into my flavour library, see what it's like on its own, because we very rarely use a single entity. We tend to add other elements in that really fit well with it, but lift it up to, to give it its pride of place within the flavour profile. Our latest variant, the Floradora, started when I was sitting in my garden. I noticed all of the different creatures that were coming, not only the pretty butterflies and the beautiful bees, but the other insects as well. That's how Floradora started, by me watching the plants that the, the insects really love and taking those, putting them together. And so, you know, if you take the top off a, a bottle of Floradora, I've no doubt the insects would be really interested in it. And then over here, of course, we've got the, the cabinet of curiosities. We've got all of the different variants of Hendrix that we've launched over the years, plus other bits and pieces as well. So this liquid was one that we produced after I'd been to Venezuela. So we did this liquid using a plant that I found out there, what the Indians call scorpion tail because the flower calyx curls over like a scorpion tail. And the distillation was done in a still just like this one, which caused real interest within the tribe that we stayed with because they'd only been non-nomadic for three generations, so hadn't ever seen anything like this before. So I think I was a, probably a bit weird to them, but then I'm weird to most people. The opening of our new gym palace, which we've got you know, the grounds and the, the greenhouses, we've really moved into producing more variants. But the ability to take things from the greenhouses and the garden and experiment with has really opened up the possibilities for us to do innovation. We have so many plants in the world, so many places we can go, 
and we're very nosy and we just want to see what's going on in different places. So innovation will always continue.